Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin and San. Here's one of the great, great, great opening lines of all time. Better than Call Me Ahab, better than it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Certainly better than that one. So here it is. Ready? The great way is not difficult for those not attached to preferences. I'll say it one more time. The great way is not difficult for those not attached to preferences. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I could do the whole mic drop, you know, goodbye, good night, there you go, uh, because that sums up, that one sentence sums up Buddhahood. Of course, Sensan, the third patriarch, who wrote this Jin Jin Ming, went on for a few lines longer than that. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he nailed it in the first sentence. But I'll give you some other ones that uh, he decided to write down for us. When not attached to love or hate, all is clear and undisguised. So maybe the words love and hate are unclear or um, misleading in a way. Hate's pretty dead on. Love, however, is the attached sort of love. Remember, the great way is not difficult for those not attached to preferences. So if you're not attached to love and not attached to hate, then it's all clear. And the word attachment is really key in this whole thing. Our likes, dislikes, loves, hates, whatever other dualistic evaluations of things you would like to make, they're all the result of our mental formations. We're telling a story, we believe it, we determine goodness or badness based on that story as it happens at that moment. And that story ignores impermanence. It ignores non-self. Two of the marks of existence. It's denying emptiness. And when we do that, we're causing our own dis-ease, our own discomfort, our own dukkha, our own, if you want, suffering. For example, when I was a kid, and up until not all that long ago, I really, really, really didn't like broccoli. I would say for a good portion of that time, I was attached to my dislike of broccoli. And maybe it was because, you know, it was overcooked when I was a kid or whatever, but broccoli was not my go-to vegetable. I told my story, self a story about it. Oh, I don't like that. It's mushy. It tastes funny. And then eventually, not all that long ago, I decided to try it again, and then I told myself a different story that, hey, this broccoli stuff ain't so bad. I think I'll have some. 
It's just a story I told myself. Broccoli didn't change. My taste buds may not have even changed. Couldn't, couldn't say, don't have any empirical data to compare that with. But it was the basis of my dislike and my like, as it turns out. I just talked myself into it. I made it up inside my head. If I had just not made up the story and just ate it, well, things would have been totally different. We all know those, those statues of the Buddha. You know, totally peaceful, serene, uh, sometimes even with the little quarter of a smile on the lips. And that is what demonstrates equanimity, right? It's not easily phased one way or the other. Winds come, winds go, rain comes, rain goes doesn't matter. Rain is rain, wind is wind, it's all good. If we maintain that mind of equanimity by not being attached to our preferences, then we know the nature of the Buddhas. We know the great way because it says it right in the opening line. The great way is not difficult for those not attached to preferences. It talks about equanimity. It talks about the um, non-dualistic approach to day-to-day -day life. Zen Master Sung San, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, you would say, well, he wrote this book, and we all know that that just wasn't the case. It was, you know, somebody who transcribed them and, you know, his talks and whatnot and, and compiled it into a book, but we'll, we'll use that anyway. He wrote a book called To Want Enlightenment is a Big Mistake. You would think that's what we're here for is because we want enlightenment. However, according to Zen Master Song San and Seng San, third patriarch, the fact that we're grasping at this thing called enlightenment rather than just maintaining the equanimity is the source of our ignorance, our delusion, our suffering. Tseng San writes, do not remain in a dualistic state Avoid such easy habits carefully. Yeah, it is really easy to, to tell ourselves these stories. And yeah, I don't like the left wing. Oh, I don't like the right wing. They're wrong. They're right. And not to be cynical about it, but there are those who say that, you know, that's kind of just two sides to the same coin, but not even going down that road. The attachment, the attachment to the rightness and wrongness of leftness and rightness is where the problem lies. 
The arising of other gives rise to self. Giving rise to self generates others. Know these seeming two facet of the one fundamental reality. In this emptiness, these two are really one, and each contains all, writes Seng San later on in the Jin Jin Ming. Ming Wei lately has been giving talks that, that involved the notion of uh, the lack of difference even uh, when all around us have their hair on fire, saying how different this is from that. The great way is embracing and spacious. To live in it is neither easy nor difficult. Paging Lemon Pong, your wife was right. The great way is really easy. It's not difficult at all. So listen to your wife. To have a narrow mind and to be attached to getting enlightenment is to lose one's center and go astray. Again, wanting enlightenment is a big mistake. Not enlightenment is a big mistake. It's the grasping, it's the I need this. That's the big mistake. The attachment to the wanting is where we get into trouble, is where we cause our own dis-ease, our discomfort, that hole that we feel like we got to fill with something and it ain't in us. It's somewhere out there and damn it, I'm gonna go find it. And I have the feeling it's this thing called enlightenment. In this world as it really is, in quotation marks, there is neither self nor other than self. To know this reality directly is possible only through practicing non-duality. Don't waste your time in arguments and discussion attempting to grasp the ungraspable. I wish more people on social media heard, heard that bit about the wasting time in arguments, but such is not the case, and it's not the great way. It's their choice. To know reality directly is possible only through practicing non-duality. What is Zen practice if not the direct experience of reality as it really is? Right? That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to worry about enlightenment or not. We just directly experience everything as it is, as it happens, as it comes and goes, and that's our practice. Without being judgmental about this coming or that coming. To put your trust in the heart-mind, Jin, side note, in Chinese the word Jin refers to this thing called heart mind in which case the brain and the heart are not two separate entities hence the jin jin ming to put your trust in the heart mind is to live without separation and in this non-duality you are one with your life source Seng San keeps driving it home. No separation. No good, no bad. 
Sung San and, and Wanji Dharma would always say, don't make good and bad. And I think the word make might be the key one in there. And I might add, and if you do, don't become attached to that judgment. Because that's not the great way. You can like and you can dislike, and it's fine. But to be attached to that like, to be attached to the hate, to be attached to the good and the bad, is not the great way. And I've given a talk on the Jin Jin Ming at least once before. I even did sort of a colloquial retranslation of uh, Richard Clark's translation. Uh, I think it was called the It's All Good Ming. It's my go-to. It's like any time I find myself getting caught up being judgmental, finding myself in pain, I realize that it's because of a story I tell myself about preferences. That there is good and there is bad. I like this. I don't like that. And it's my choice. If I want to be miserable, I can choose to be miserable. It's very easy to do so. I had the opportunity to do that very recently, and I fortunately chose not to be miserable. And I have to say that uh, it probably worked out to my benefit to do that. It's easy. Just stop being attached to your preferences. Stop clinging to, I like this, I don't like that. When this comes, this comes. When that comes, that comes. Be like the Buddha on the altar with a little half smile, maybe. And it's our choice. We were already told that the great way is easy. And if we're not finding it easy, we should take a look in our practice about what it is that might be the hindrance. And then we can go out and practice for the benefit of all sentient beings.